thank you, Joe, for your wonderful leadership. Uh, your passion for justice is so um, overwhelming and so obvious and infectious. And thank you for your leadership on so many issues. Thank you for uh, your leadership on such a wide range of issues. And, and we've learned so much in our outreach from leaders across the country like Jan because uh, we've got a lot to learn in the federal government about how to enforce uh, Matthew Shepard. We've got a lot to learn in the law enforcement community about how to be more culturally competent. And it is people like Jan, people like all of you that we call on to do that. Uh, it is wonderful to be in a local, uh, in a local body because as uh, Steve mentioned, I am a former local elected official, and there is that old adage, once elected local elected official, always a local elected official. And when you were talking about all the things you have done to empower uh, people, and everything you ticked off is about equal opportunity, uh, the rubber hits the road in local government. I'm a strong believer in having what I call redundancy in law enforcement, strong protections at a local level, strong civil rights protections at a state level, and strong civil rights protections at a federal level. Because laws are only as good as the political will of those people enforcing them at any one given time. And those redundancies are critically important for those periods in our nation's history where one body of government, whether it's local, state, or federal, lacks the political will to enforce those laws. And so that is why the work you are doing here at a local level is so critically important. And I hope you have seen by now that you again have a partner in President Obama and the Obama administration on this and so many issues. The Department of Justice Civil Rights Division is indeed a I had the privilege of working for Senator Kennedy, and he often said that the moral test of our strength as a nation is how we treat those in the dawn of life, our children, how we treat those in the twilight of life, uh, the elderly, and how we treat those in the shadows of life. And in the Civil Rights Division, we address the issue of equal opportunity for all too many people who live in the shadows of our communities. And we met many of them today. We spoke with our Muslim brothers and sisters this morning to listen to their concerns. And there is undeniably, in so many communities, and most recently, regrettably, in the Muslim community, this headwind of intolerance, this headwind of hate-fueled violence. And as I said to some of you before, when I was down in Nashville, Tennessee, meeting with folks recently, including an imam whose mosque had been torched Around by a group of bigots. It tears your heart, and you see that our role is to ensure that we use every tool in our law enforcement arsenal to move them from the shadows and into the sunshine. And we met with Latino leaders today, and we talked about the challenges confronting immigrant communities. We talked about the difficulty of executing the settlement, the case, here in Cuyahoga County that stood for the simple proposition that an informed voter is the best possible voter. And when you enforce laws that have been on the books for 45 years that guarantee access, meaningful access, to the ballot for someone with limited English proficiency, that is not a Republican victory, and that is not a Democratic victory. That is a victory for democracy. A year ago, almost to the day, at the White House, when the President, in the presence of the family of James Byrd Jr. and the family of Matthew Shepard, and today, uh, yesterday, was the 12th anniversary of his murder, a day that will live in infamy. And it was so remarkably exhilarating, albeit bittersweet, to sit there and see for the first time in our nation's history the words sexual orientation and gender identity enshrined in the United States Code forever. But now we are going around the country 
if you were in Waterloo, Iowa tonight, as one of my colleagues is, you could be participating in the Laramie Project, which is a joint venture where we are telling the story of Matthew Shepard and using that story as a training tool, not only for law enforcement, but for the community writ large. Because one thing is clear to me, we can't prosecute our way out of the bigotry that we see day in and day out, whether it's bigotry focused on our LGBT brothers and sisters, bigotry focused on our Arab American, Muslim American, and Sikh American brothers and sisters, bigotry focused on our African American or Latino brothers and sisters, bigotry focused on all sorts of religious minorities. We can't simply prosecute our way out of this. We must also educate our way out of this and empower communities to recognize that this cancer of the soul that we call bigotry is a cancer that we must eradicate. And that is why we are spending so much time in middle schools where I say to people, you know, today's bully is tomorrow's civil rights defendant. That's why we do cases like Mohawk County, New York, where we reached a settlement with a school district in a case involving a high school kid who was gay and he was harassed and he was beaten up and his parents told the school district about it and they did nothing to address it. And so we intervened in a private lawsuit and we helped facilitate the settlement of that lawsuit. And that lawsuit stands for the simple proposition that every child should be able to attend school in a safe and nurturing learning environment. And we will continue to do
our budget, we've gotten the largest increase in our history for civil rights enforcement. Thanks to Eric Holder. Thanks to Thank you very much.